welcome to the Simple Sophisticate Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. I'm your host, Shannon Abels. And whether you're listening on your commute, exercising, working in the garden, or sitting down with a hot cup of tea or a cafe au lait, thank you for tuning in. Let's get started. Good morning and welcome to The Simple Sophisticate. Today is the 112th episode of The Simple Sophisticate podcast and we are going to talk about happiness today. I, well, why not? (laughs) Why not talk about happiness? No, but sincerely, I have had a handful of incidents where I, they all come back to feeling truly content and I wanted to share them with you. And so I, did a bit more research and compiled a list of 11 ways to be happy right now in this moment today, right now, these are things you can do to be happy. I have a lot of other episodes and posts where we talk about happiness in the long haul and how we cultivate that. And yes, we should absolutely do that. But sometimes we need to remind ourselves um, to get out of a funk. And these are simple ways you can do that with very little money, if any money at all, And um, anyway, we're going to dive into those. But before we get into today's topic, I have two petite plaisirs for you today, and I'm excited to share both of them with you. Some of you may know about one or both of these, and uh, maybe then there's some of you who don't know about either one of them, but that is why I'm bringing you both. Um, Both are things I think you'll enjoy and can incorporate into your life. All right, let's get started and uh, let's talk about happiness, 11 ways to be happy right now. And I want to begin with a very simple quote from author Robert Holden. If you think something is missing in your life, it's probably you. The reason I picked this quote is because often it is us that is getting in our own way of feeling truly happy and content. And so while it is a very simple quote and it's taken out of context because it's taken out of an entire book about how to be happy immediately, we can absolutely incorporate that quote into today because what we're going to talk about today is really all things that we individually can do. Don't have to rely on anyone else. We can do these things. So let's get into this. The pursuit of goals, of dreams, either admittedly or unconsciously, takes place to welcome more happiness more contentment into our lives. But what about right now? Are you happy? Are you someone who can sit in this moment and say, yes, I am happy? Saying you're happy doesn't mean you don't want to grow by tomorrow, improve by next month, or evolve as an individual each year of your life. The answer merely reveals if you are content with what you have right now. I was thinking about just this topic because I sat on my back porch in a much smaller house than what I've lived in the last 10 years. And I've taken fewer trips than I've taken in the last four years. And I immediately answered yes to this question. Now, I use just those two examples of how my life has shifted and the sometimes assumption that a bigger house makes you happier or more extravagant plans and schedules make you happy. I'm not saying that travel doesn't make you happy. You know I'm an advocate of travel. It, it awakens us. It teaches us. It pushes us to grow. And I'm looking forward to traveling in the future. But I was amazed this past year how, yes, downsizing and actually traveling less didn't affect my overall happiness. And in fact, because of so many other components, I am more content than I have ever been. It was after reading a particular post, which I'll provide a link to in today's show notes from another blogger, when she asked this question, would I be content if I knew that where I am right now will never change? That question was one of the primary inspirations for today's episode, because A skill we all need to attain and master is something we have to learn or relearn. And the reason I say relearn is because I think we often possess this skill innately as children. And then because we must survive and hopefully thrive in this world, we must look to the future frequently, which takes us out of the present. 
And so it's the skill of being able to be happy right now, right now. It was prob- it was something that came naturally to us more so as a child probably. But because we are driven, we are humans, we are aware of the future, that's actually a very advanced ability. But we have to recognize that sometimes that is what causes us to not be happy now. We need to balance that. So that was an interesting question. And I'll say it again. Would I be content if I knew that where I am right now will never change. Now that's a really drastic question, but it's a goal to strive for, to be able to say yes to that question. And again, we all know that change is inevitable, but if that was the case, would you say yes to that question? I will admit, I have absolutely been guilty of this in the past of saying, I'll be happy when fill in the blank occurs, when I get this job, when I move to this town, when I have this much money in the bank, when I, when I, when I. But as today's episode will hopefully remind us, if we don't learn the skill of being happy now, right now, even when that much dreamed about event occurs, the same mindset will be present and we won't fully be able to appreciate and enjoy it even when we attain what we have been seeking. I thought that was an interesting concept and it's talked about in the post that also brought forth the other question we just talked about. The idea of if you're someone who cannot be happy now, you do not have that skill to be happy now, then when you do place whatever dream it is that you're chasing into the sentence, when you do achieve a certain uh, salary, when you do achieve a certain... um, house, you've bought a certain house in a certain town, you've traveled to a certain country, you've met a certain someone, you won't be able to appreciate it then either. So do your future self a favor and learn how to be happy in the moment right now. And again, that's what we're talking about today. I'd like to share with you 11 ways you can be happy right now. In one quick bite, as the first item reveals, or one quick change of thought or one quick activity. These are simple ways you can change your thoughts, your idea of what your feeling is in that moment to a happy one. None of these, as I mentioned at the top of the episode, cost ample amounts of money. We each have the power to be content in the moment, even if we are working towards something in the future. After all, if we enjoy the journey, we'll be able to revel and truly appreciate arriving at our destination even more. Let's get started. Number one, enjoy a piece of quality chocolate. I am going to start with this one. Oh, yeah. Let's start with the good stuff, right? (laughs) Why not? There are actually three very profound benefits beyond just the pure pleasure of tasting decadent chocolate that can be found specifically in dark chocolate. And one is the release of endorphins. And when these endorphins are released ever so slightly and only temporarily, our mood is elevated and our stress level is lessened. Now, there are more long-lasting ways to bring happiness into our lives, but a dark chocolate truffle at night wouldn't do you any harm, and as we've just learned, can actually put a sincere smile on your face. So number one, enjoy a quality piece of dark chocolate. Number two, create a story that works for you, not against you. Everything we allow to run around in our minds is completely our choice. What is available to run around in our minds is based on the experiences we've had, the influential people in our lives and what they have said, thought, and done. And it is based on these influences that we craft our story, why things happen and what will happen, or or at least what we think will happen. And so it was while I was listening to the Positive Psychology podcast recently, episode number 70, and I'll provide a link to that on today's show notes. And I was contemplating the examples that host Kristen Trumpy was sharing that I recognize my life's overall contentment had begun or has begun, I should say, to improve. And it all began with my mind. I encourage you to listen to the podcast for more thorough explanations of the power of our stories and how they have an effect on our everyday contentment. You change the story, you change your world. And I think just recognizing that and recognizing that, oh, that is a story I'm telling myself. And if I get trapped in that track, 
Well, of course, I'm only going to go that direction because that's the only road I see as possible for me. But if I change that track, I could be traveling down another road also. So think about what story you have being told in your mind. And if it's not working for you, change it change it. So number two, create a story that works for you, not against you. Number three, imagine this scenario. Every time you think you are lacking something and you're probably wondering what scenario. Well, I'm going to tell you, hang on, hang on. After listening to Martha Beck's book, The Joy Diet, there was one story that grabbed my attention that she shared regarding this idea of being happy at this very moment. It goes something like this. A nobleman was walking along a road, distraught with only a bag of what he most cherished slung over his shoulder. His path crossed that of a beggar who had nothing. And the beggar asked him why he looked so forlorn, for he is wealthy and he is of privilege. The nobleman replied, but I am not happy. I have left it all and I am searching for happiness. The beggar, confused by this statement, decides to teach the nobleman a lesson. He grabs the nobleman's bag of cherished items and runs into the woods. The nobleman, understandably upset, runs after the beggar, desperate to retrieve what had been stolen from him. The beggar, far enough in advance in the woods, places the bag on a path where the nobleman can find it and then goes and hides behind a tree to observe the nobleman's reaction. As you would expect, the nobleman's response is full of utter delight, relief, appreciation, and happiness. I loved this little story. Sometimes it is hard to imagine this type of feeling when we're just observing it in someone else. If we haven't ever experienced losing something temporarily that is very dear to us, could be a loved one, could be a thing, could be a way of life, could be a salary, your job, whatever, something that you truly depend on that is a huge component of your happiness If you've never had that taken away and then fortunately brought back to you, you may not know the sheer ecstasy that you're going to feel. But if you have, as I have, the sheer joy and gratefulness you will feel will leave you in that moment refusing to whine and complain about ever having enough. That is the moment we need to bottle up and keep with us at all times. And that is the moment, as number three states, that we need to imagine every time we think we are lacking something. And I say this very ardently because I'm talking to myself just as much as I'm speaking here in this episode to you as well. Whenever you think you don't have something that you should have, or if only I had this, I'd be happy, tell this story to yourself or tell the story of whatever happened to you where you lost something and then it was found. And then catch yourself, catch yourself. We have so much going well in each of our lives. We need to make sure we don't take the blessings of our lives for granted. And it's easy to do. I mean, we get busy. We are moving along We're in our routines. The routines are good because those habits help us. We don't have to think all the time. It's, it's not necessarily a bad thing when we do take things for granted, but we need to check ourselves. We need to check in. We need to be conscious and be aware of how wonderful things actually are. And we, when we can recognize this truth, our happiness in this very moment, when we immediately do that, will grow immensely. So number three is imagine this scenario, the beggar and the nobleman, Every time you think you are lacking something, and that entire story is on the show notes, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 112. And again, that was found in the Joy Diet by Martha Beck. All right, moving on to number four. Understand that delay is not denial. Now, simply because we are happy in the life we are living now doesn't mean we can't have goals, dreams, and aspirations. Of course we can, but it is the journey and it is the flexibility we must possess with us as we traverse toward our goals that will help us to remain happy along the way. Simply put, a delay in your plans should not be misinterpreted as a denial. Let's keep that in mind. Number four, moving on to number five, understand your mind. A tremendous part of understanding your mind is realizing you have tremendous control over it. Part of the reason we may be in a bad mood is because of number two. The story we are telling ourselves in our mind isn't working for us. 
We've accepted the negative plot of how and why things are going the way they are going and how they will go. But once we recognize that our thoughts are a choice and we can redirect them, we give ourselves back the power immediately. In episode 20 of The Simple Sophisticate, I discuss in depth how to master your mind with 10 specific tips, and I'll include a link to that on the show notes today. So number five is understand your mind, which leads us to number six, train your mind. Once you understand it and know how it works, now is your job to become the master. Train it. The mind is a muscle. It is our muscle. We can train our muscles to be better able to do certain things if we focus on them, give repetitions with the right exercises, and repeat regularly. The mind is no different. Practice simply observing your thoughts and not accepting them with meditation. Avoid or reduce high fructose sugar. Studies have shown that excessive regular amounts actually does impair our thinking, and I'll provide a link to that study on today's show notes, as well as practicing your memorization skills. There is a book by Harvard professor, Dr. Mary Pazinski, and she provides ample ideas and inspiration for boosting your brain power, and one of them is to practice memorization. The key here is to train your mind. And the stronger it becomes, the easier it becomes to master it and control the thoughts in your head. Number seven, I'm going to have a trifecta here of three things about mind, is keep your mind in shape. So yes, we've trained it, but now we have to keep it in shape. It's just like, okay, we got our muscles where we want them. Just think, think of those abs or those arms, those legs, whatever you're training for. You know that you can't just stop once you've reached where you want to, you know, the the conditioning that you want, you have to keep it going. Now you won't, maybe you don't have to do so much intensity, but you do have to have regular consistent workouts. So number seven is keep your mind in shape. Author of Make Your Brain Smarter and founder and chief director of the Center for Brain Health at the University of Texas at Dallas, Sandra Bond Chapman, reminds us that our minds need to stay in shape just as much as our bodies do, as we are capable of living longer than ever before. So in order to live a quality life, we must regularly keep our mind in shape by developing new interests and pursuing our hobbies regularly. In fact, one of the six ideas she shares to keep our minds in shape is to find what we are passionate about and pursue it. If we are interested in what we are doing, we are motivated and are more willing to challenge our minds when new techniques need to be learned. And thus, why I am pursuing learning the French language. I am passionate about it and that is what motivates me. Otherwise, I know I would have given up a long time ago. You've got to like what you're pursuing if you're going to keep doing it. So that's one way to keep your mind in shape. All right. So number seven, keep your mind in shape. Number eight, exercise. When we exercise, we release endorphins. And when endorphins are released, we talked about in number one with the chocolate, essentially your mood has the ability to naturally improve as those endorphins decrease levels of stress and pain. In a study done by University of Vermont Burlington in 2009, the endorphin high could last as long as 12 hours after you exercise. Now that was the maximum after exercising for two hours, but there's anywhere in that window, it's going to last after you've stopped exercising. So if you want to be happy right now, get outside, get on that treadmill, go on, uh, get out, just get out in the garden, just be physical, just be outside doing what you love to do. So that's number eight, exercise. Number nine is journal it out. One of the best tools that in the moment of frustration we cannot imagine could be as powerful as it will be is to write down what we are feeling, why we are feeling it, and what we are afraid will happen. Simply by seeing what we are feeling helps us to make sense of it. And oftentimes, at least for me, provides a reality check as I see that many of my fears are absurd. But most importantly, it reveals to me what is important to me and then allows me to shift my attention to what I am doing and what I can be doing to move in the right direction. So number nine is journal it out. Number 10, soak up a bit of vitamin D. We need serotonin and researchers from the Baker Heart Research Institute in Melbourne found that levels of serotonin in the body are higher during summer than winter. The only variable with the participants was their exposure to more sun. So what does serotonin do? It is a neurotransmitter that regulates appetite, sleep, 
memory, and mood. No wonder so many people love the summertime. But sincerely, think about it. When you step outside, we're not talking about going outside and laying in the sun for an hour and getting a suntan or a sunburn. We're talking about just getting outside at any time when the sun is out and letting that vitamin D do its job. Immediately, I feel better when I step out on my porch and I do this every single morning. The sun hits my porch. The direct sunlight hits my porch at about... I'd say 9, 9.30. Obviously, it's changing because every day is changing. The sun's shifting and moving. But the idea is in the early sunshine in the morning, I love just going out there with my dogs and I just put my face to the sun for a couple minutes and soak it up. I cannot tell you how good that feels. I have never been able to really do that at the house, in any house that I've owned, just because I didn't have a back porch like that that was exposed. And I'm not saying that that is the main reason that I'm more content, but it is something that is accessible every single day. And I definitely take advantage of it and I definitely enjoy it. Something to try to do. Get outside, soak up some vitamin D at any time of the year, not just summer, obviously. Anytime there's a a way, a chance to get outside and and be with nature. I think part of it's just being with nature. Um, We've talked about that here on the blog. I'll provide a link to that about the powerful effects of getting outside. I'll provide a link to that particular post from this winter. All right, moving on to the last one, but the one that often we forget about. Switch to monotasking. Both Dr. Sandra Bond, whom we previously talked about, and the author of international best-selling book, The Happiness Equation, Neil Pasricha, which just came out earlier this year, strike down the idea of multitasking. Why? It increases stress. It heightens brain fatigue. In other words, it weakens our willpower, which we talked about a couple weeks ago, and thus reduces our quality of production. Therefore, our level of happiness is depleted. So focus on one task, complete it, and move on. So number 11 is switch to monotasking. All of these ideas sound simple, no? Well, you're absolutely right. They are simple. But sometimes we fall prey to the idea that life must be complicated, dramatic, exhausting, and extremely busy to be at its best. But that is a mistake. Richard Branson reminds us that, quote, complexity is your enemy. Any fool can make something complicated. It is hard to keep things simple, end quote. And the difficulty he speaks of, it's not that living simple is hard. It is hard to say no to anything that may complicate the simple habits we have instilled, but we must. We must trust that simple is better because so long as the simple ways of living we have cultivated allow us to forever be growing, we have found the contentment we are seeking or that we were seeking and we must protect this way of life. Simple is better. So it is my hope today that you realize how simple being happy can be if we just help ourselves out a little bit. And to reiterate and to keep the message simple but clear, in the words of Buddha, greater happiness comes with simplicity rather than complexity. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and 11 ways you can be happy right now. For all of the links that we talked about, visit the show notes on the blog, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 112. And uh, you too can find all those studies and all those posts that we talked about that may have been of interest to you. But now stay tuned for this week's Petit Plaisir. We have a double dose of everyday pleasures that I think you're going to enjoy. I'll see you in just a few. Welcome back. Today's petite plaisirs are first something that I've introduced a couple weeks ago to my readers on the blog and to my newsletter subscribers, but I have not mentioned them here on the podcast. And I wanted to make sure for those of you that are um, solely listeners of The Simple Sophisticate that you knew about this. Two weeks ago, we talked about willpower, if you may remember. And one of the keys was being um, preventative, planning, not procrastinating. And studies actually showed that simple to-do lists actually help improve our willpower. Well, so happens that I've been working on creating notepads that contain 
the exclusive illustrations by my illustrator, Inslee Ferris. And they are in full color and available on two different types of notepads. I have a to-do list notepad for you. I also have a grocery list notepad for you that's titled to market to market. They have different illustrations on them and the sizes are four inches by six inches. They are on 20 pound weight paper, recycled paper, and they are all white. I do ship internationally. So if you live abroad outside of the States, I do ship to all sorts of countries. Um, The shipping is a bit higher, but you will be able to enjoy the pads. And the more you buy, the cheaper they are. So if you purchase up to 10 notepads, you can get it all at the same shipping cost, one fee, not double. But anyway, you can buy um, in packs as well as individuals. And the more you buy, the more discount you get. So I do have all sorts of packages available. And all of those links and more details are on the show notes today, the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 112. Oh, and they have 50 sheets of paper on each one. So they'll last a decent length of time. Also, if you're an Instagram follower, you can see how other readers are using their Simply Luxurious Life notepads with the hashtag TSLL notepads and the tag, the Simply Luxurious Life. You can see those images and your image, if you want to post one, can also be on my feed um, in the future if you ha- take a picture and share it with hashtag TSLL notepads and include my tag, the Simply Luxurious Life. I myself love the market to market one. In fact, I was using other notepads um, for this and put it on my cork board for my grocery list in my kitchen. But now I'm using my own and um, it just works really well to add whenever you want, whenever you run out of something. And then I have my to-do list right here on my desk for all the blog, blog projects that I'm working on. Anyway, if you have any questions about them, um, do email me at info at the simply luxurious life.com or simply check out the Simply Luxurious Life notepads in the Simply Luxurious Life shop. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it. But now to the second petit plaisir. It is the book that I mentioned briefly in today's episode, The Joy Diet by Martha Beck. And you probably recognize Martha Beck's name because she has appeared on Oprah many times. She writes for the O Magazine and she has been in Real Simple as well quite a few years back. But she is a life coach that is not only empowering those that read her articles, but she herself has been on the journey of trying to live a full and contented life. And this Joy Diet book, while it did come out back in 2003, this is the first time I've read it. And I read it a few weeks ago, actually listened to it in my car on my trip. And it offers 10 daily practices for a happier life. And each of the 10 habits or practices, she breaks them down chapter by chapter. She insists that you master each one before you begin the second one, begin incorporating it. And so much of it aligns with the concepts that we are talking about here today with happiness, about our minds. It also, so much of it aligns with just the general premise of living simply luxuriously. In fact, one of her practices is giving yourself at least three treats a day. I love that one. Um, hello, dark chocolate at the end of the day, but it doesn't always have to be a food treat. It can be something as simple as giving yourself, pick something you enjoy doing, um, something that just feels like a special treat to you. But she encourages you to do that three times a day, every single day. This is, these are daily practices for a happier life. I did listen to an audio, but I want to pick this book up to have and hold in my hands and write all over and annotate like crazy because I know it'll be a great resource to have in my library. But the book is called The Joy Diet, 10 Daily Practices for a Happier Life by Martha Beck. And I'll provide a link to that book on today's show notes at the simplyluxuriouslife.com backslash podcast 112. I think you're really going to enjoy that book. I hope you've enjoyed this week's Petit Plaisir, where each week ideas are shared to make the everyday all the more enjoyable. Tune in at the end of each Monday's podcast, where I'll recommend a book, a film, or a recipe, anything that is a simple pleasure to satiate your sophisticated taste. Thank you for tuning in to the Simple Sophisticated Podcast, where intelligent living is paired with signature style. For more ideas and inspiration throughout the week, stop by the blog, the Simple 
simplyluxuriouslife.com or pick up the book, Choosing the Simply Luxurious Life, A Modern Woman's Guide. To stay caught up on the most recent podcast, blog post, and receive exclusive news as well as an extra dose of inspiration each week, subscribe to the Simply Luxurious Life's newsletter, which arrives in your inbox each Friday to enjoy with a hot cup of tea or your morning coffee just in time to jumpstart the weekend. Until next Monday, I'm your host, Shannon Abels. Bonjour.